While some of y'all know that I'm a big fan of some slashers like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Child's Play, well, they're all pretty good, but I recently saw some recent ones that came out this past summer, and that was the Fear Street Trilogy, which came out on Netflix. But is this trilogy, based on R.L. Stein's book series, a real good slasher trilogy worth looking into, or is it just something that's already been slashed to death, or something like that? What's this special spoiler-free trilogy review, and find out. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, with a special spoiler-free trilogy review. And it's on the Fear Street trilogy, directed by Lee Janiak, which came to Netflix this past summer. Now, the... Now this was to be filmed for many years since it's since 1997 when Disney's Hollywood Pictures acquired the rights of the series, but the project never never materialized. And then more recently with Fox before Disney bought out and became 21st not 20, well well following the breakup of their company 21st Century Fox and then changed to 20th Century Studios. And unfortunately, it was to be done with production company Shining Entertainment, which they um, their deal unfortunately ended the previous year. So anyway, uh, they managed to give Netflix the deal, and well, they gave it to them. The film came out, premiered on Netflix on j this past July. And stars Cam Madeira, Madeira, Olivia Scott Welch, Benjamin Flores Jr. Well, most names I'm not quite familiar with, though, but anyway. Now, the film follows a group of teenagers in the town of Shadyside who are terrorized by an ancient evil responsible for a series of brutal murders that have plagued the town for centuries. Now... I will tell you this, uh, that this had been going on around for a long time, believing that it was caused by um, someone who used witchcraft long ago. Anyway... I can tell you from what I've seen the first part of, the, of this, it's really something. Uh, I like some of the cast members and what have you. Uh, they have. Now, these teens have encountered mysterious characters such as someone in the, wearing a skull mask and, well, lots of others. Uh, and soon, they find out about some other things that would connect to the events of the next one. But anyway, I'm just not going to give into too much of the story, because I don't want to spoil the whole story for you. But anyway, I really think this was just so good. This had some pretty shocking twists and turns and what have you, but that's why I liked it. To see in some of these slasher flicks. That makes them pretty good. And makes them worth watching. So anyway. I have to agree with what the critics are saying. Because this film did get some good response. And everyone. As the film's currently certified. Fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Win 83%. Well. They praise the performances of the cast. As well as the horror elements. And faithfulness to the source material. This of course is based on the book series by R.L. Stein, who mostly was best known for doing the kids' horror book series like Goosebumps, The Haunting Hour, and several others. Uh, now, of course, you'll know I'll be reviewing the Goosebumps movies later on this month. I'll also review the first Haunting Hour movie, Don't Think About It, later on as well. Anyway, 
This room's not too bad. I do like um, the atmosphere of the year of 1994. And I get to hear some familiar songs in one of you as well. So anyway, I think that makes it a pretty cool uh, film and stuff like that. Anyway. Yep. Alright, next up is the second one, which, now, I'll only give you one heads up, because it would, a little bit of close to the end of the story for the first movie would lead into the events of this one, Fear Street Part 2, 1978, which would come out the next, which would come out on July 9th. Anyway, now, this film centers on a group of teenagers at Camp Nightwing who must come together to survive a possessed counselor's murder spree. Now, several of the cast members from the first movie are back, but there's also others as well, including Sadie Singh, and, um, oh, there's many others. But anyway... Again, the film got positive reviews, praising the screenplay, the direction, as well as the performances they got that were given by some of the other cast members, Emily Rudd and Ryan Simpkins. Anyway, the film currently holds an 88% on Ron to Mail, so it's certified fresh as well. Now, from what I've seen of this, we go to the summer of 78, and... When we encounter there's some really, well, I hate, I don't know how to say this, but wow, gruesome stuff going on at Camp Nightwing. Now, the reason is why I think this film is even more good than the first one is, yeah, I like this a little more than the first one, is because I like the atmosphere just a little bit more, and that um, it kind of reminds me of some of the slashers that came out long before this, like Friday the 13th, for example, or The Burning and um, Sleepaway Camp. Um, there's several, lots of others and what have you. But anyway, the kills, I think, were pretty darn good, too. I mean, I just saw so many... Ooh, that's gotta hurt bits! i tell you what. But anyway, um... Now, um... Now, one of the scenes did kind of remind me of a little bit of a... Well, involving cockroaches getting dumped on someone. Kind of, kind of reminded me of that little scene at the... The Halloween dance in the haunting hour, don't think about it, only involved a piñata, not a bucket, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, Fear Street Part 2, 1978, I think was pretty cool. And I mean, uh, and so our um, main characters of Dina and Josh are on this here, um, case here, and we'll try to find out about this here mysterious fear witch, and what have you. But anyway, but soon we would go back to 66, actually 1666, <laughs> as we proceed to the third part, Fear Street Part 3, 1666, which was released a week later, on July 16th. Anyway, this received positive reviews from everyone as well, who described the film as an effective conclusion to the trilogy. And currently, it's at 89%, so it's certified fresh as well. But anyway, while I do like this as well, I mean, for the first half, it does take place in 66, and then goes back to 1994, which would be called Fear Street Part uh, excuse me, Fear Street 94 Part 2. Which is where it really gets to be really cool. Uh, I mean, where they take on the mysterious killers in the mall, which is where um, the first film actually starts out in. Now, for the... 
for the 1666 half of this, I must say it's it's pretty good too. It reminds it kind of reminded me of um the film The Witch, which I have seen. I haven't really confirmed a review of it, but maybe another time perhaps. But it does kind of remind me of that, except um with a few. Well, you know, if you've seen The Witch, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I mean, but anyway, I really do like how it in them what have you. And, and just, just that, I think its atmosphere is pretty good, too. I mean, even though it took place in 1666, in the first bit, half of the movie, and then it goes back to 94 for the second half. So, from what I've seen, the kills in this are pretty good, too. So, it's just a real shocking, bloody blast from start to finish. So, anyway, if you... I'd say these are three flicks you gotta see, especially during the ha the Halloween season, you know. But anyway, I think all three movies are all good. They all got good characters, good stories, and all that jazz. I mean, I may not have read the books though, but still, I was rather surprised to have known that R.L. Stein was involved in this. I never knew he would write. Um, well. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, I can't get the right words to come out of my mouth, so, my bad. Um, but I think they're, but I still think they're pretty good. The kills are really creative, um, and, um, in 1666, well, did serve as an effective conclusion to the trilogy with lead into the second part of 1994. But anyway, if I had to pick the best of the three, I'd pick... I picked 1978 Part 2, which that's probably the the best of the three. But anyway, that's all I'm going to tell you. And I'm not giving separate scores. All three films in the Fear Street trilogy will get five stars from yours truly, which of course means on a scale of 1 to 10, well, they each get a 10. Mm-hmm. You better believe it. Okay, so anyway, what are your thoughts on the Fear Street trilogy? Please tell me what, what's your favorite film in this trilogy. Tell me in the comment section below. And if you like this video, you can click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you my re-review of the original Child's Play. Yeah, I'm about to re-review the first four Chucky films and review the next three afterwards. But again, I am not re-reviewing -re the remake. Sorry. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you like this, you may want to consider check out my, um, the starts of these other, these other great slasher flicks. And the upper... Left hand corner is my review of the original Halloween. I'm going to go ahead and give that to you since even though I'm re reviewing that film later in the month, but I'm going to keep it up there though. In the upper right hand corner is my review of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy of Friday the 13th, which includes the final chapter, which is easily the best. Or if you or go to the bottom left hand corner and see my favorite of the Nightmare on Elm Street trilogy. Flix, which is Dream Warriors from 1987. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.